Okay guys, looking down here at the bottom of the unit, you can see this green slimy substance that's uh, all over the condenser pad. Basically what happens is, is when it gets really hot outside and you have a leak in your refrigerant line, primarily your suction line, that suction line, which is the larger of these two refrigerant lines, it actually works as a vacuum to the compressor. And when you get a low side leak, it sucks in water and air into your system. And that basically degrades the white mineral oil uh, that's inside the unit that's feeding the compressor. So you get oxidation and hydrolysis. So the results is that attacks the copper components within the compressor. So this green oil is formed uh, through that process uh, from the dissolved ionic copper compounds that are basically soluble in the oil. So green slime comes from the water hydrolysizing uh, copper compounds forming copper hyd hydroxide that forms a grease-like material with the oil. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what's going on here. Translated, this unit's in really bad shape and it's going to have to be replaced and it's going to have to be thoroughly cleaned. So that's what we're going to do. Okay guys, now that we have recovered all the refrigerant out of the system, we're ready to start cleaning the system out. Uh, this right here is a product, well, it's actually called Flush, but this uh, particular brand is called RX11. What uh, we're doing right now is we're cleaning the liquid line directly after this. We'll be cleaning out the suction line. I'm going to show you the other end of uh, what it actually looks like once uh, the flush is um, activated in the system and starts blowing out all the um, contaminants. Okay, and now we're on our third treatment of the liquid line. I'm going to put my thumb over it, repeat the same process as before. Technician's going to fill the flush up. Make sure the line is good and filled with the uh, RX-11. I'll release it and we'll have two nice and clean line sets ready for install. Flush is actually in the system and I can actually feel it. I'm going to release the pressure. There we go. And now we are ready to solder in our equipment and start pulling a vacuum. And then just in case you didn't know, it's always nice to have a fire extinguisher nearby in case things go wrong during your solder. Very important safety tip when soldering in uh, your line sets, especially in a dry attic. Okay, so we're about to solder in the uh, suction and liquid line on the upstairs unit. Outside we have the uh, nitrogen running through and purging the system just enough to where we can solder the lines and make sure that the oxidation is removed from the system while we're uh, soldering in the lines. So right now we're going to go ahead and get everything ready to seal the system up. Nothing like a hot torch and a hot attic, guys. Okay, so um, we just got through soldering in the uh, suction and liquid line. You can see our technician did a great job putting a nice bead of solder around the uh, liquid dryer as well as right here around the suction line um, while we uh, while we were putting the heat to the unit we made sure to run nitrogen through the system which is that orange tank right there what that does that prevents oxidation from building up inside the lines keeping the lines nice and clean because if not uh, that black set will definitely uh, affect the unit's performance and uh, you definitely don't want any trash or any buildup in the lines. You want it nice. So right clean. now uh, we're soldering in our last uh, line at the very top. We're soldering in the uh, suction line and we've actually 
removed the valve core stem and the hose from the gauges to where as he's uh, soldering the unit upstairs the uh, nitrogen and oxidation has uh, a port to escape and this will be the last uh, soldering spot on the install and then we'll be ready to start pulling a vacuum. guys we got all of our uh, soldering uh, done on the suction and liquid line see we got a nice bead of solder all around both line sets and then right now we're gonna do a nitrogen pressure test to make sure that uh, we don't have any leaks and once it passes that test we will be ready to pull the vacuum So guys, right now we are doing our pressure test using nitrogen to fill the system up and make sure we don't have any leaks. As you can see here on our suction side, we have 250 PSI of pressure, standing pressure. Seems to be holding really good, not dropping at all, meaning our technician did a great job of sealing up the line sets with solder. And we'll give it a few more minutes, make sure that needle doesn't move, and we'll be ready for a vacuum. Okay guys, now we're at the what I feel like is the most critical part of the heat pump installation, which is the vacuum. Uh, we've got our vacuum pump hooked up. We're actually using half inch hoses. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a nice tight connection, otherwise it won't pull a vacuum. Uh, our target is 500 microns. In order to achieve that target, we'll probably have to pull it all the way down to roughly around 230 microns. And then once we uh, shut off our valve core removal tools, that should uh, seal it, and we'll see where we stand. But we're shooting for 500 microns, and as soon as we get there, we'll be ready to introduce the Freon uh, from the condenser into the system. Okay, so right now we are pulling a vacuum. We've just completed our pressure test. Um, as you can see right here, this little uh, handy instrument that should be in every installer's vehicle is called a micrometer. And I know, unfortunately, a lot of technicians either don't know about them or don't use them, but this is probably one of the most critical parts of the installation. I actually met a guy a couple of days ago I interviewed him he'd been doing heat and air for 20 years and didn't even know what a micrometer does well what this is doing is it's actually pulling a vacuum on the system it's an indicator to let us know just how much of a vacuum that we have our target is 500 microns we've already uh, pulled it down uh, way past that we're at 210 right now most technicians will be out here for a long time because of their setup uh, what we use to make ours go a lot quicker, uh, we have the Appion Valcor Removers. Uh, we have a uh, 7 CFM JB vacuum pump, which works really good. And then we've got uh, the half inch hoses. And we run them directly from the service port to the vacuum. And we totally bypass the manifold because the manifold often has, times has a lot of leaks. You want to make sure that you're, you change your vacuum pump oil. We change it every uh, after every use, uh, one to two times at the two times at the max. But uh, as you can see, uh, our vacuums pulled down nicely to 150, so we should be in good shape. Now, the important thing is to make sure that it holds, because uh, a lot of times you can get a good vacuum and then all of a sudden you close off your uh, service ports, um, either at your Man, uh, your manifold or at your valve core remover tools and you'll see a rise. Now rising up to about 500 microns is not bad actually that, that's about ideal. 
but you get up uh, above that and it keeps continuing to rise that means that you've got a hole somewhere and you, you need to maybe go back to reintroducing your nitrogen into your system figure out where that leak is but we're looking really good right now uh, I'm going to shut off these service uh, these valve core removal valves and see what uh, our actual reading is okay now that we've got our vacuum pulled all the way down to about 220 microns uh, we've turned the vacuum pump off we sealed off our valve core removal tools right there as you can see it's sealed off there and then the underbody right there um, this little cord right here takes us right to our micrometer which is still hooked up We've been sitting here for about, oh, eight minutes now, and we're holding at 240, well underneath the 500 mark. So I feel really good about our vacuum, and we should be ready to start introducing uh, refrigerant back into the system. Okay, guys, we're wrapping up our uh, heat pump installation. We've got our vacuum that was pulled, and uh, we were very satisfied with the uh, micrometer readings. We have opened up the service ports on the suction and liquid side. We've reintroduced our uh, R410 back into uh, the system, which again now has some clean line sets. We've got uh, our temperature probe on our suction line. Our outdoor temperature is 78 degrees. We're looking for a 16 degree superheat on this Heil 13 crr 410 a system. Uh, we will continue to add refrigerant until we get to that superheat setting. As you can see, the unit's all installed now. We put in some new Armaflex on the suction line. Refrigerant uh, pressure is all dialed in. We've already turned the unit on and made sure everything's working fine. So this is the final product. You can see ductwork's nice and tight. The unit is level. The pan is larger than the unit in case you ever have any drips. Um, you can see that there's a running P-trap on the system. Nice uh, barrier of armor flex all the way uh, to the unit. You can see that the PVC line actually has a little T-trap there to blow out any uh, unwanted uh, debris for when we do cleaning services. And yes, I do know that the secondary drain is not ran to the outside uh, the customer that we did the installation for we made him aware of it he wants to run it himself which is fine so uh, in the meantime he has a float switch device that's connected to the system that'll shut off if we do get some water in the pan preventing water from getting into his ceiling so very happy with this installation i know the customer will be too if you guys have any questions visit us on the web at tnheatandair.com or you can give us a call at 615-900-6873.